What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out the early access build of Astral Ascent. And I'm going to be honest with you right at the front end of this. Uh, this game is as close to flawless as I've seen in a really, really long time. This is a magnificent first release. It's the kind of thing that really makes you wonder what's going to be further on into the early access. This is a gorgeous hand-drawn roguelike where you are trying to escape from some kind of fanciful realm by effectively hunting down the gods and murdering them. Although this time around they're not themed like in Hades, they are themed along with the Zodiac. However, that's kind of where the comparison to Hades ends. Like narratively, kind of similar, but in terms of gameplay, much more similar to something like Rogue Legacy, I would say, where it's a game about going into the dungeon, going as far as you can, beating stuff up, getting lots of power-ups that are super fun and make you OP, eventually failing and losing. There's the constellation right there in case you're wondering about it. Uh, but anyways, you go in, you go as far as you can, you get meta currency, you upgrade your HP, you upgrade your attacks, and then you go back in to be more successful. Uh, the game is great looking, it feels great. If you wanted to get it after watching this video, you can look down below in the description. But since we've only got like 25 or 30 minutes to play around with, we might as well get started. So thank you for joining me. Let's play a little bit of Astral Ascent. All right, so here we are in the world of Astral Ascent. Right now I'm playing as a, I forget this guy's name, it's like K-something. Uh, there are multiple characters you can play, they all have different move sets. Uh, the basic way that all of this works, we're taking a look at the UI here. Uh, up in the top you've got your HP, this is your mana. Uh, your right click is going to be a number of spells, these are customizable. You have four spells available and you can cycle through them basically. They kind of rotate as you cast them, you see what I mean? Uh, they'll rotate and so all four of these spells are customizable and you can level them up and you can make them do different things. Uh, this right here is like a super attack type deal. This right here is basically your health flask a la Dark Souls. And then your left click is just like a really cool looking combo right there that just looks super slick and clean. There's not really a whole lot for us to do on this map right now. And so let's just jump in like straight into the greater game. Uh, her right there, she handles the upgrades that happen in between runs. So like the meta progression. I've done one run so far and she allowed me to basically increase my HP by about 33%, which is really, really good because I got stomped by the first boss, dude. I got embarrassingly buried by the first boss. All right, so let's get on into the dungeon, and as you can see, all the animation is incredibly clean. Like, it's all so smooth and silky and buttery. Like, this game just absolutely oozes off the screen with just charm. Uh, we've got a spell right here, Ultra Loaded Knuckles. Yeah, let's do that. Let's 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 install ultra loaded knuckles on our first slot right there. That sounds sick. And then we'll just salvage this guy real fast because we already have a number of super hot punches. What does this do? Oh, cool. So it's like a big old dash attack. That's actually really really helpful. Okay. Uh, our mana does go up as we do normal, like, uh, auto attacks, basically, like the combo attacks. That's how you load yourself up to use your right-click abilities. We have three choices right here. We can make our attack speed faster, we can increase our bonus damage, or we can have more max life. I think I'll probably go with attack speed. Nice. Yeah, let's do that. And then he wants me, okay, he's just telling me a hint. You can do a fall attack like that right there to stomp people. Uh, every time you get to the end of a room, you're going to get to choose a path. All of these circles right here, when we get to the last one, we fight a boss. And so we have a choice between two of the same thing right here. Uh, we've got a key room and we've got a key room. Now, based on how hard the difficulty of the room is, you're also going to get stars. Now, there's a number of currencies in this game. Keys are a currency that are used to open reward chests. Stars are used for special shrines and things like that to boost your character permanently for the rest of the run. And then there's also money that you can spend in order to get like healing or to get more stars or to get keys or to get items, a sort of Binding of Isaac style. And so anyways, lots and lots of currency here. Let's go ahead and take this difficulty room and we'll see how it plays out for us. All right, where are the bad guys at? I'm hungry for fisting. Let's do it. I don't know what that is. I've never seen one of these before. Does it just go like up? Oh, it does. It do. It just go levitate. Room, 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 room. It is indeed punching time. Let's do it. These little guys shoot a projectile. Oh, there's a lot of them. That's not ideal. Uh, get him with a fireball. There we go. He's dead. We got a bunch of other little guys over here. He's going to do something bad, and I'm trying to not get hit by that something. Oh, he's got a death ray. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, yeah. Oh, we can cling to the side of that. All right, fair enough. He's doing a lot of death rays right now. Let's just load up a little bit more mana right there so that when we get down to the lower floor, we can just fireball everybody down. 
and it looks like we turned out somewhat okay here. Uh, the game does have a limited auto target, so like you may have noticed when we were taking a swing at that little owl right there, if an enemy is slightly above you or slightly below you, the game will auto target kind of in that direction and just assume that's who you're going after. And that's actually a really smart decision because it means that the combos in this game, they flow just effortlessly. Like they feel really smooth when you're bouncing in between enemies that need to get got. Uh, so let's see what we got over here. Was that the entire room? What do we have going on? That was the entire room. So we can get another key, or we can go to an exploration room, and we will get a spell. Let's get a spell. Spell sounds good. The default spells are fine, but, like, I found that there's some really cool spells out there that you can play around with. I had one where it would summon a sword, and so you wanted to rotate through your spells as fast as possible so that you had as many floating swords as possible around you, and whenever you auto-attack, they also have a chance to attack. And man, it just works out great. I don't know what this little guy is right here, but I assume that I'm supposed to, like, murder for Kate him. I'm going to give up a little bit of loot here to go after him. Hey, we got the Astral Spirit. He dropped the chest. All right, let's kind of... Ow. Okay. All right, I've been struck. I'm in pain. Yeah, there's a lot of you down here. This may have been poor planning on my part. Can you die, please? Thank you. Perfect. Uh, if you hit this thing right here, it sends out like an elemental shockwave that deals a bunch of damage to enemies. Uh, what is that right there? Heroic Gambit, target two nearby enemies after a spell is cast. Okay, so this is going to be a modifier for one of our spells. Next hit on target deals 50% more damage. Oh, uh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, let's put that on this punch right here, I think. And we'll put that in that slot. Yeah, go ahead and do it. Uh, I do find the interface to be a little bit clunky when you're moving items around. You've got to take your hand off the mouse in order to put things... Like, you've got to use the K key, basically, in order to confirm. And then X is to move you backwards in the menu. And I, I really feel like they probably could have made it just clickable. I'll try it out the next time I go through. But just an observation is having to take my hand off the mouse every time there's an item interaction can be a little tiny bit difficult. Or at least inconvenient. Oh, he shot a laser at me. That thing is like a death plant. I don't want to be anywhere near it. So I'm going to try to kite these guys back real quick, and then I'll just deal with them over here so that I don't have to deal with the trap plant. There we go. All right, so this guy right here, we're going to want to dash past him. Let's go ahead and take out that little owl right there. We'll get him with a fireball. There's another blast that he put out. I want that crystal, but I don't want to... Ooh. Yeah, let's go down here. This is one of the little secrets in the game. Uh, these pink crystals right here, they're currency for shops. And so you kind of want to pick up a lot of those because every now and again, shops will allow you to really, really like round out your build. Uh, we've got this rock wall right here. If a, ro if a wall looks craggy like that, you can grab onto it. Oh, yeah, spell, dude. Uh, the voice acting in this game is quite good. You can tell that it's maybe a little bit anime-inspired. So, like, it's a little over-delivered sometimes, but at the same time, it's still good. Uh, we've got a spell right here, so we've got a shield. This will give a shield to the character. Costs no mana, but goes into cooldown. I do like that, but I don't know where I would fit it in. Oh, it goes in my E-slot. It's my utility spell. Well, perfect. It fits in perfectly, then. I misread the situation. We don't really have enough money to go to a shop yet, so I'll probably go for a exploration room so that we can get that gambit, which will make our spells better. That's one of the little slot-in items that makes your spells do different stuff and perform differently. All right, I'm interested in trying out this shield. I really am. Okay. Yeah, shield seems to last a little while. It's got a little bit of a duration on it. If you pop it at the right time, you might be able to save yourself. There we go. Mark those guys up. Perfect. Then we've got a little bit of money right here. Let's go ahead and drill that on out of the wall with our punches and kicks. Uh, that thing right there is just going to spit out enemies. I'm pretty sure that's all it does. Like, I don't think it does much else, and you don't really get XP or any kind of reward for the enemies that it poots out. So, like, I don't know. I just kind of avoid them and go around. Uh, we'll go up the wall right here. we got two laser dudes up here. A little bit unfortunate. Would rather not be dealing with laser dudes right now. I'm going to go ahead and fall off the edge real fast just to avoid him. Like, let him do his death ray thing. Woo! Okay, iframe saved me right there. Uh, the enemies are affected by attacks, by the way. Uh, so if I bait that guy right there, the trap will hit the enemies. Unfortunately, he's even in a worse position now than he was previously. Not great. 
Yeah, I need him to die. Ow, my butt. My butt has been bitten by a chomp plant. Chest, what do you got for me? Monies? We do have three health stones. I'm going to wait and see if I can find a healing bush first. Maybe I can get my health back that way faster. I am playing with the keyboard right now. A control is largely done with the mouse and the wasp keys and the space bar, which is my preferential way. If I have to play a platformer that's going to be, you know, or at least a platform heavy game that's going to be on PC, I do think that that's the control scheme that I prefer. Is he going to throw a thing? I want to get him marked as soon as possible so that we get that bonus damage. But I don't know if it's feasible right now. There we go. There's another health shard. So the more health shards you have, the more health you heal when you pop it. Uh, let's see. We've got four missiles after the spell is cast. Ooh, that's a spicy meatball right there. Okay. Yeah, let's put it. Let's let's put all of our hopes into kind of our thunderous punch over here. Our punches of thunder. All right. So on our list of items we can get right here, we've got a feather, actually. The feather's a pretty important item. You use that to level up the spells that you have on your right click. I think each one gives you like a flat percentage base increase in damage to making itself just more potent. And so always a good choice right there. Uh, we have a new spell over here. I do want the I do want the feather though. I want to start leveling up some of my punches and whatnot. Like I want to level up some of those big hitter abilities so that we're a little bit more terrifying to the enemy. Because right now I don't feel like we're really instilling that terror and fear. There we go. And that guy's gonna keep rolling, 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 rolling over there. Big limp biscuit fan. Uh, you can interrupt enemy casts and whatnot sometimes, but you've just sort of got to meta game memorize which ones get interrupted by being hit and which ones do not. Get that fireball going right there. Looks good. All right, what else we got around here? I need a healing plant. That's what I'm most interested in. The Aorus Altar. Chance to add target onto nearby enemies after hitting them with a basic attack. Yeah, I'll take that aura. That sounds good. Let's throw that aura on. That actually, I think, stacks pretty well. Cool. So now we've got a chance to basically put a targeting buff that doubles our damage every single time we strike somebody. So that's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Uh, let's stay out of the way of that real fast. Oh, that's an enemy right there. He looked weird because they've all got the targeting reticle on him. Like, I didn't know what it was. Okay, yeah, somehow we avoided damage right there. I don't know exactly how we did it. We are full up on healing shards. I still want to see if I can find a bush, though, that's going to, like, fix that. Yeah, give him the big boy hit right there. All right, we got death lasers flying around. Let's just kind of try to stay out of the way of those. Oh, dude. I butt stomped right into the enemy. And it auto picked up all those healing shards, even though I was full on healing shards. All right. I'm just going to use my healing shards now. There, and there's a healing bush right there. It figures. It figures. There's the feather. I know what I want to level up. I want to level up that punch right there. So we'll go ahead and level it up. It's now a level one ultra loaded knuckles. Nice. What rooms do we have up here? Uh, we've got ourselves Pavo's Ruins, which I've never seen before, so I don't know what that does. We've got a spell, and we've got a spell mod. I'm interested in, like, just kind of expanding my knowledge of the game, so let's see what Pavo's Ruins are real quick. Let's see what it's got going on. Let's see Let's see what it's got cracking. It's really high up. Oh, feeling sick. Ready to bargain? I don't know. Does it cost me anything? Doesn't look like it costs me anything. Oh, I can pay with my health in order to get more feathers to level up my stuff. Okay, all right, fair enough. I'm only gonna level it up once because I feel like there's gonna be more level ups available later on. That's a fight room with three keys. That's a fight room with three keys. We do, let's go to the vendor real fast because we do have money. Like, I think the most expensive item I've seen so far is around 200 and so we'll take a look. Obviously, the environmental design in this game is utterly peerless. Just an absolutely gorgeous game. It actually kind of reminds me, like, the design of it sort of reminds me of Skull the Hero Slayer, where, like, everything is just so beautiful and well put together. All right, so we've got Lightspeed Fist, Knock Down Closest Enemies with Thunder. We've got Fire Spreader, Adds Burn Stacks to Nearby Enemies. And then we've also got a common gambit that has a 40% chance to freeze the enemy twice every time we hit. I like that. 
But I think I'm going to go with this guy right here. And I'm going to replace one of my super hot fire punches. And then we will salvage that for quartz so that we have a little bit more money. Can I get up on top of that? Oh, I was going to say if I could get on top of that and break the crystals. And then I guess I'll take the common gambit. Like, we've got the extra cash around, and I don't think we're going to hit another shop before we get to the boss. And so we may as well. Uh, let's go ahead and put the frost mod on our thunder spell. And also, let's see what the thunder spell actually does. Okay, so it looks like it's like an AoE lightning strike. There was no enemies around, so it didn't actually work. But it seems like that's what it does. We've got another Pavo's Feather over here. I don't really... Well, gambits are good, too, with where we're at. Like, I do need to gambit out my abilities. Let's do that. Let's make our gambits a little bit more better. All right, enemies, where are you at? Get him with a fireball right there. He's throwing out some stuff. He's now dead. We vaporized him. We'll kind of jump up to here. Oh, nice, dude. We've got, like, another buff right here. Uh, I will take the max life. That's, that sounds great. I'll absolutely take a little bit more life. Hits in this game can be kind of chunky. There we go. Kind of get him with one of those bad boys right there. I'm going to pull back the... Oh, God. Okay. All right. He's got, like, a come here type move. Ooh, that was spicy right there. That actually did a lot of damage. Uh, I don't want to pick up that bush just yet because it gives me health back. And so I just want to fight enemies and kind of see what happens. If I take a hit, it'll be nice to be able to get my health back earlier in the level. We'll kind of bounce. Oh, no. It's a good thing that curved because I brain farted right there and had no idea what I wanted to do in order to escape it. All right. There's a health shard. We got another big dog down here. Oh, that was pretty sweet. I think it chained all those dandelions together and wiped out everything in the corridor. That's pretty fun. We've got four keys. We haven't seen a key chest yet, but maybe someday. There's another health shard. I'll also take that. Let's go up this way, and we'll see if we can find anything good. Oh, I can't get back to the health bush now. Oh, no. I've made a mistake. I'm bad at my job. Uh, we have a chance to apply vulnerability stacks on hit. Let's keep loading this bad boy up. Yeah, let's make that thing like the ultimate debuff ability since it happens regardless of where we are or like who we're targeting. Like it just auto hits. And so I feel like that's a really smart idea. We've got Andromeda's Bar. So Andromeda's Bar is where you go to spend your stars. Uh, you can get more attack power. You can get more HP. You can get more attack speed, stuff like that. We do have enough keys. So I think I will go to Andromeda's Bar. Let's head on over there. Everybody enjoys a nice drink every now and again. Something carbonated, something cold. What do we got here? We've got attack speed 5% for four stars. I'll take it. And then we've got more bonus damage for six stars. I'll take it. There we go. And so we got a little bit of damage and a little bit of attack speed. If you see a bench in this game, you can sit on it and the character will like ruminate about his thoughts and basically like flesh out his backstory and sort of like his personality. So like anytime you see a bench, if you're interested in getting to know the character a little bit more, just in terms of like what they're into, what they believe in, so, uh, so far and so forth, I found that sitting down on benches is a really good way to get to that information. Uh, there's a shard altar over here, but we don't really have any money, so we can't buy more healing shards. I will probably go for... Let's do the Pavo's Feather. Let's do that. Let's. I think another level up on our spells is a good idea. Let's make them nice and mega strong. All right, a little bit of that right there, and we got a big guy over here. Let's go ahead and debuff him up first. Wow, dude, that's such a strong ability. It's so powerful. It hits so hard. I'm gonna upgrade it. We gotta make it more. We got. We gotta make it more efficient. What do we have here? Oh, a free star. Nice. I'll take that. Five free stars, in fact. There we go. Oh, I tried to get off the ground. I tried. Unfortunately, I wasn't fast enough. Oh, I didn't need to cast that lightning. That lightning was a waste. Let me get my combo back a little bit off that guy right there. I don't suppose there's any healing around. When you're going down those little pits right there, uh, sometimes don't booty smash when you're going down. There we go. 
There is a little bit more health. Uh, we'll get a fireball going out that way. Double fireball, and we should be on, like, Mega Fisty Boy Punch. There it is. Mega Fisty po Boy Punch has been deployed effectively. But, yeah, when you're falling down these chasms, sometimes there's little, like, nooks on the side that will have, like, healing or something inside of them. So it's probably smartest to slow fall it, unlike what I do, where I'm just like, ah, booty slams away! Like, I don't know. I, I tend to be a little bit cavalier about... You guys know my rule. I'm all about DPS, all right? You don't have to have good defense if your offense is so overwhelming that the enemy never gets a chance to attack. That's the way that I feel. We stack that attack speed around here. We stack that crit. We stack that rapid fire. Like, we, we do what we have to do. Uh, let's pick up this feather. And I would like to make... I would like to make my lightning fist a little bit stronger. So let's do that. We now have level 2 lightning fist, so it's doing 20% more damage. What's next? Uh, there's a healing room over here, or there's a key room. Let's do the healing room because we've got a boss coming up. So we'll take the healing real fast. I doubt that I'm going to beat this boss. It feels kind of like Rogue Legacy in the sense that the bosses are pretty hard. And if you don't learn to read their abilities, it's going to take you a bit to take them down. Like, I get the feeling the game expects you to have some upgrades under your belt before you start knocking out bosses like they're not even there. Before you start giving them the old knuckle sandwich, you know, the old-fashioned chin check. I can smell a big bad boss. Okay. So I think we got Taurus. Again. I'm starting to get bored. Safe. Oh, let's fight boredom. Together. All right. I don't remember all of his attacks. I know he charges after that one right there. Oh, the lightning's got like a... The lightning's got a radius. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's a little horrifying. I hated it. Let's see if maybe I can get something off right here. Oh, I caught that last one. I'm like trying to get my mana back up so that I can hit him with some spells, but... I don't know what the timing is on that one right there. Oh, what's he doing? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. We got a combo jump in between all these right here to avoid the fire. Get him with a... Oh, he got me with that one? All right, fair enough. I guess I got got... Uh, he will turn to face your character, by the way. In case you were wondering. Oh, he has four attacks in that combo. I thought he had three. All right. Ah, I think he got a dash through the third one. Come on, give it to me. Yeah, you gotta, okay, you gotta dash through at least one of them. Uh, give him a little bit of the old fiery fist right there. Uh-oh. I may have messed this up. Oh, float just a little while longer, please. Okay, all right, all right. I'm gonna get my health back. We're gonna debuff him real quick. Come on, what are you doing? I don't know what this is. Uh-oh. Ow. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, absolutely awful. Hated it. Oh, walked right into that one. Okay. Well played. Well played. I am a tiny bit worried about my safety right now. I probably shouldn't have gone for that. That was probably a really bad idea. I got no mana left. I got to work on my manas here. Okay, I'm going to try and float a little bit in between each of these hits just to maybe give me, like, a little bit more leeway to get away from his attacks. Give that a little space. We'll just go for some basics right here to get our mana back. Okay, there we go. Not bad. Oh, he's doing this again, huh? All right.
All right, not too terrible, not too shabby. Could have gone worse. I just need like a li Oh, I'm getting hit. Oh boy, I kind of timed that one bad. Oh, dude. Come on. Oh, we're doing this again, are we? All right. Well, DPS opportunity. I think you want to be kind of running away from them as they trigger. Like, you never want to be running at them. All right. Hey, there it is, dude. I got him. All right. I'm so happy. Wow. That was a blast. Who would have thought your little fists would be so powerful? I train hard. And you will need every drop of it. You still have 11 Zodiacs to defeat. Good luck, Kikirin. Sweet. Oh, dude, look at the size of that godly treasure chest right there. New spell. Yeah, we got all kinds of good. Do I only get to pick one of these or do I get all of them? So we've got another light speed fist. It's such a good ability too. Uh, I will take another light speed fist. Yes, I will. I, I like this spell a lot. It's a good spell. All right, so we've got that covered. We'll close that out. We'll salvage this guy. I didn't even use my shield during that entire thing. I was so panicked trying to dodge getting slashed in half by some psycho with amazing hair that... You know, his hair care product game was on point. You can tell he conditions. I don't know. And, like, when faced with such depravity, how do, how do you withstand the onslaught? You know what I mean? Uh, I will unlock a slot, I think, on my ultra-loaded uh, Knuckles. Yeah, let's do it. I'd like to add a third mod onto it. Maybe another missile mod so that when I use it, it fires eight missiles instead of four. I mean, the downside is the missiles are eating my, my buff that gives me double damage. So that's kind of a letdown. Like, I'm sort of self-sabotaging uh, with this build, but that was just me not being aware of the metagame. Uh, off to the Red Barons. Let's take a look at it. But this game is called Astral Ascent. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, I think this game is sick as hell. Like, I don't really have any complaints about it, except for the menu being a little bit fiddly-diddly and requiring you to take your hand off the mouse. Like, that's pretty much the only thing. And honestly, I didn't even test it either, and I probably should have. Maybe, uh, let me let me see if I can, let me see. Ooh, yeah, great reward. Let me get a little bit further, and we'll unlock something. And in unlocking something, I'll see if maybe we can, we'll do the gambit right here. I'll make an edit, though, so we'll test out the gambit real fast to see if I can use mouse control in order to mess with my items. All right, so here's the gambit at the end of that next room. Let me see if I can use the mouse. Yeah, so that would be my preference, actually, is, like, I think they could keep the, the K to move items around, but just make this menu right here mouse-enabled. So, like, you click on the spell, and it rotates it down, and, like, it selects it, and then you just click on the slot you want it to go to, and then you click again to confirm it. And that would eliminate the issue altogether with you having to take your mouse, or your mouse hand off to go to the keyboard uh, so frequently. That's about it. It's honestly probably rekey bindable as well. Yeah, it is rekey bindable. Uh, so, well, yeah, there we go. So it is rekey bindable. And so I think there's probably a way around that too where you could take like the C key and make that confirm instead, like on menus. Like that would actually probably work much, much better. So there you go. It's a non-problem. It's not even worth complaining about. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. I will see you all next time. Thank you for stopping on in. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. But for now, it's time for me to go. Take care, everybody.